How's it going guys? Today's video is all about installing Apple's brand new operating system, Mac OS X Lion. Now Lion being a new release has many new features and changes. I'm not going to go through these right now, but you can check them all out on Apple's site at apple.com slash macOS X. Now the main problem whenever a new operating system comes out is that it may have bugs that are usually fixed in future updates. Another problem with the new release is that people may not be able to adjust to the changes the release brings with it. In the first part of this video, I'm going to cover how you can get the best of both worlds by multi-booting your existing Snow Leopard system with Lion. Multi-booting simply means that a computer has two or more operating systems installed on it. You can skip this part if you just want to upgrade Snow Leopard to Lion, but I don't recommend doing that. Multi-booting your system means that you'll have less problems and you can fall back to Snow Leopard if something goes wrong. Installing Lion on a multi-boot partition not only means that you can go back to Snow Leopard at any time you want to, but it also enables you to have a clean, fresh system just as if your Mac was brand new. In the second part of this video, I'm going to go through the relatively simple install and setup process for Lion, and in the third and final part of this video, I'm going to show you how you can get back to Snow Leopard any time you want to. Before doing anything, back up your system if you have important data you need to keep. If we're going to create a multi-booting system, we need to give Lion some hard drive space to run on. This process is called partitioning, and we can do it very simply through Apple's own disk utility application that you'll find under applications slash utilities on your hard drive. If you have not yet backed up your data, I suggest doing so right now. First, launch the disk utility application and click your hard drive on the list. It should be the very first item at the top. Now click the Partition tab, and under the Volume Information section, make sure Mac OS Extended Journals is selected for the Format option. Now name your partition and specify a size for it, then press the Enter button on your keyboard. It is important to make sure that the size you set is correct by looking where it says a new partition will be created, size, and then the size you gave it. If it is not correct, then you will need to try again. When you are happy with your new partition setup, click apply and confirm that you want to partition your hard drive. You will now have to wait a few minutes for Disk Utility to create your new partition. When this process is complete, you should see the new partition appear in the left hand side list in Disk Utility. This is all it takes to set up space for multi-booting Lion. Next up is part 2, where I go through the actual installation and setup process. It's very simple to install Lion. Once you have downloaded it from the Mac App Store, the installer application should be in your dock, but if it isn't, it should be waiting for you inside the Applications folder on your hard drive. Open up the installer and click Continue. Once you agree to the license agreement, the installer will ask you if you want to install Lion on your main hard drive. This is okay if you are just upgrading to Lion, just click Continue and Snow Leopard will be replaced. If you are multi-booting Lion, press the Show All Disks button and select the partition you want to use. You might be able to customize your installation of Lion, but for some reason the customize button was grayed out for me. Without getting into detail, once you click install, you will have to wait a few minutes for the installer to prepare. After this, your computer will automatically reboot into the Lion installation environment. This process could take anywhere between 20 minutes to an hour, depending on how fast your computer is and whether you're installing Lion onto a different partition or just upgrading your existing system. Installing Lion onto a different partition will be the fastest option, and on my MacBook the installation process took 20 minutes to complete. Once the installation is completed, your computer will restart one last time. If you are not multi-booting your system, you will be taken straight to your desktop just as it was before you install Lion. However, if you are multi-booting, you will be taken into Lion Setup Assistant. In Setup Assistant, you will be asked to select your country and keyboard type, connect to the internet, transfer data from another computer or time machine backup, fill in your information, select a time zone, and finally, create a new user account. Once you've completed the setup process, Lion is yours for the taking. In part 3, I will show you how you can get back to Snow Leopard at any time you like. If you followed the multi-booting process, you'll be able to access your Snow Leopard system just like it was before you installed Lion. To do this, restart your computer if it's on, then as soon as it turns off, hold the Option or Alt button on your keyboard. When it restarts, you will be presented with a list of volumes your Mac can boot from. It also works if you do this after turning your Mac on with the power button. 
In addition to your Snow Leopard and Lion partitions, you will notice that you can also boot from a new Recovery HD partition if anything goes wrong with your Mac while you're using Lion. This recovery option can only repair and reinstall Lion, not Snow Leopard, Leopard or Tiger. If you need to reinstall an older version of Mac OS X, you will have to boot your Mac from an installation disk or USB key. To boot into Snow Leopard, simply move your mouse over to your Snow Leopard partition, click it, then click the circular arrow button that appears underneath it. In just a moment, you will see the Snow Leopard desktop, and clicking about this Mac will indeed show us that we are back in Snow Leopard. So that's it for this video. If you liked what you saw, please show your support by rating this video and or subscribing to my channel. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments section below and I'll be happy to answer them. Also, if you have any suggestions for new Mac videos, please leave them in the comments and I'll see what I can do.